So we are on the tail end of Memorial Day weekend. We had so much fun over the past few days with friends, new and old. And now June has got us thinking about our anniversary. We will have been married for 10 years on June 8th. So we've been reflecting a lot on all things relationship. So we thought we would sit down with you guys and do a little chat since we've never really covered relationships or our personal relationship and how we've navigated through thick and thin. We are winding down from lots of fun in the sun and it's time to refresh with a smoothie bowl. So I'm gonna make our whole family's favorite smoothie bowl. We've been making this one since like the beginning of time. This is our bubblegum smoothie bowl. It is in our book and it's also in our meal planner app. So check it out there, but essentially it's just a bunch of frozen bananas, frozen jackfruit, which definitely has like a bubblegummy, juicy fruit flavor, a little bit of pineapple or mango, frozen pitaya, which is dragon fruit, the pink kind. It's gonna give it its color. And then I like to add in some strawberries and raspberries, a big heaping scoop and a half of Sun Warrior Vanilla Warrior blend, and just a splash of liquid enough to help it to blend. We want it to be nice and thick and creamy. It is so, so good. Get a lot of questions about Sun Warrior, and yes, it is safe for the whole family. We all enjoy it in everything from smoothies and smoothie bowls to waffles and pancakes and baked goods. Dusty and Brian were riding bikes. I've been out mowing the lawn, sweating. We are just like drenched in sweat. It's so hot in Florida already, and June isn't even here, so. We like the somewhere liquid light. We usually add it to our water bottles. It also is great for smoothies. This is really good for replacing electrolytes if you're super sweaty. You guys know we have a discount code below. You can get 20% off. It's evergreen. You can always come back and use it again. We love Sun Warrior. It's USDA organic. It tastes wonderful. It gives you that extra boost you need in the gym. So we highly recommend it. Go check it out. Well, you guys, here we are, 10 years strong. I can't believe it. <laughs> it doesn't such feel a like long it. time, but it, no, it doesn't feel like it at all. And apparently, we're full, full blown adults now as yeah. parents of two. Yep. Plus three, if you count Bo, <laughs> who's sleeping right next to us, but yep. I still feel like a kid. I kind of tried to structure and organize everything we've been talking about over the past couple of days and boiled it down to like three of your guys' suggestions. Yeah. So the intro will be kind of rapid fire. We're gonna talk about our top 10 highlights from the past 10 years of marriage. And then we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of our top 10 relationship tips. Right. And then at the end, we'll close it out with another rapid fire talking about our top 10 goals for the next 10 years. I think number one is our wedding day itself. I just did not expect for like our first look to feel so emotional about that. Right. And it was just, the rest of the day was history from there. It was just. Yeah, I was I was surprisingly emotional on our wedding day too, because I'm typically not that type of person, but there was so much work. We did literally, like you said, blood, sweat, and tears, working with our hands to put that wedding together. And of course it rained on our Storms. outdoor wedding, but it was still a, a fantastic day. You're right, that was a good one. So I'll say number two, something that has changed my life and our lives has been traveling. So we went to Europe on our honeymoon, obviously right after our wedding. We've since returned to, to Italy once again and now have been hosting retreats in Costa Rica for many years. And when I was a kid, we didn't travel much. And if we did, we would go see family in like Arizona or maybe California. But together we've seen the world and it's mm -hmm. been so much fun and it has changed my idea of life and what, what it's worth and what's possible. And we've been able to do that already with our super young kids. Mm -hmm. And it I expands your world that. view. Like you're not yeah. so narrow-minded. You're much more open to different cultures and different people and right. more appreciative of them. Number three? Three is buying our home. Yeah. So it was funny because we were finally- This home or our first home? Our first home. Yeah, our first home. So buying our first home was a whirlwind. We yeah. had finally settled on 
okay, this house will be fine. Yeah. And then I was like, let me get on and look one more time. And then our house popped up. Yeah. And we fell in we love with it. it. We did whatever we could. We made it happen. Um, I think that is something that you and I are very good at, mm -hmm. is finding something we want to do, want to achieve, and just doing whatever possible to make it happen. And that was the first big thing was, yeah, finding the house, doing whatever we had to do, and we got it. Mm -hmm. We made it beautiful, and it was a good investment, and it has enabled us to buy this house. And mm -hmm. you're right, that was a big, was big fun. first step. I think the next one is our first baby, which was Bo. <laughs> <laughs> We, yeah. I, he had literally been like my Pinterest dream dog. I had yep. been pinning Bernese mountain dogs since day one. And then finally like got online and started looking for people who were breeding them and yep. found yep. one. Everybody loves Bo. He's laying right here, right here with us still. So he's almost 10 years old. Yep. He'll be 10 years old uh, in a few months. And he's been here with us all along. He's been the sweetest, most loving. The coolest thing was we went and saw him and he was the runt of the litter, but yeah. we in immediately fell in love with him. Yeah. And then we had to wait six weeks to come and pick him up. Yeah. And it fell on Valentine's Day. So he that was, was a so special sweet. memory. So such a sweet boy, still as everybody loves him. So from there, I would say like our work, like mm -hmm. starting Eat, Move, Rest, doing the, mm -hmm. the coaching, stuff the conferences that we went to so and, much fun and vegas we were in florida florida vegas they had these conferences and that's where we got like our health coaching certifications and our further education after we graduated and that was super fun for us because again we got to travel but we also got to learn and we were investing in our health and we were yeah. learning about food and all you know alternative medicines and all these things and that really also led us to where we are here yeah now. And I remember um, one speaker specifically who taught us about so many superfoods and health foods we had no idea about. And then yeah. we went home and like stocked our pantry. It finally dawned on us like we can be making our own things at home. Right. And got the step ladder out, climbed yeah. up high in the kitchen, and pulled out the boxed blunder that we received as a wedding gift. Right. We like a year later, it. we it's finally so tapped into it I and we're can't. like, let's do this. Like the speakers at the conferences taught us. And what were we doing before smoothies? Like I can't even remember, but. It was literally like the start of Eat, Move, Rest because yeah. then we blended these smoothies, felt amazing, kept sharing them on Instagram, People which was like, yeah. just starting Instagram and people started new. asking and it's like okay now we have something to post on the website and the blog and right. like eventually it just snowballed i was gonna say having max and then having live as separate events but yeah. there's like so many so we're mashing that into just having kids in general right i mean like I that was, was like equal to like wedding day oh yeah if not, like, even more even better yeah, because I mean, it's like the wedding day is still a little bit like, oh my gosh, now we're married and like there's this newness that is kind of not, not, not awkward, but like maybe a little bit scary. But with the kids, it was very bonding, even yeah. more so than marriage. Like sure. marriage is a bonding thing, but it's kind of hard in the beginning, right? Because you're young and you're whatever. But with the kids, it was like, wow, now, now I really feel tied and bonded to you for life. And and the kids are so amazing. I was so just much telling. Fun. I never could. I I always like wasn't sure. I was like, I can yeah. go either way. Like have maybe, kids, not maybe have not. kids. Yeah, right. but now I couldn't see it any other way. Just carrying them both in from the car. They fall asleep in the car, and I'm carrying them both in, and I'm like, this is like my favorite thing to see like these sweet babies just mm -hmm. asleep and hearing them laugh, and it's stressful and it's hard, and there's a lot of. Yeah kicking and crying and yelling and screaming and peeing the bed and pooping on the floor is like constant mm -hmm. but it's like so much fun and it's going to be sad when we when they grow out of some of these things i know so just donating their shoes the other day i was like oh my gosh this I is know. so sad it it's, breaks my heart it's hard be little really forever hard. because i asked max actually i was like do you think someday you might want to grow up and get married too yeah and he's like yeah he's like when me and Bev are older we'll get married and yeah. we'll just <laughs> And I'm just like, oh, so it sweet. just makes me sad then to think about them being separate because they right. are so sweet together. That's what is it? <laughs> just yard work. So like most of like the difficult things, I feel like haven't been that difficult once we've just 
committed to deciding like this is what we're going to do right and doing it right it's not so bad it's like we conjure up so much of that difficulty and fear in our imaginations yeah and that's where most of the pain resides is like in yeah. our mental space and totally. it's not so much in like the actual doing it's like just get your mind out of the way and just do yeah and to put one foot in front of the other <laughs> and pretty like... soon pretty soon you're hosting a retreat with 20 strangers in a foreign country with a three-month-old yeah happily newlywed and it's great it's and it's crazy i guess it not seems crazy and it's yeah for us again max was born after we committed to hosting our first retreat we're like what are we going to do and we're like we just have to continue <laughs> like follow through and so we get a lot of people that ask questions about how did you guys start this and how did you move and how did you do this with kids and we're like decide that you're going to do something and stay committed there's setbacks there's trip ups all these things but just stay committed and keep moving forward that's what we've done and we've continued to succeed even if it's eventually like you yeah. eventually succeed like if that you makes, stay committed like that brings up our next highlight which is actually the low light mm -hmm. and that was our next adventure to california where we stayed for a couple of months our first right. really long-term travel yeah um with just with max and i was pregnant with Liv, but didn't know it until like it, yeah. a few weeks after we got there yeah then on the drive home like the climax was the rollover accident which so we did scared. a video on yep um but yeah that it was, was a, it was a big highlight because it was aaron and i like setting forth to the wild west to, to california like we had mm -hmm. always talked about and we finally did and we were kind of let down on you know by california with our experience there and then it ended terribly with the with us rolling the camper and and then my commitment to never leave home again yeah and then aaron decided we're not going anywhere and me like saying nope we got to keep going and and trying florida and you know it it was a big moment of like reflection and thought um but but again we stayed committed to our goals of doing more traveling more seeing more and eventually moving mm -hmm. um, which we've now done we've been which in this the last house highlight yeah which is the last highlight moving here to florida both <laughs> stuck in the chair come on buddy he just wants the love he though wants the love. he's like i'm stuck but if i just stay here and continue to get petted it's yeah. fine <laughs> so moving here has been so hard we've officially been here for one year devin and i my little brother got here on his birthday may 30th uh, last year so we've been here for one year exactly and I can't believe it I kind of can't believe it I'm landscaping and finally like one year later getting things organized and it's been hard we feel a little bit isolated sometimes but we also feel like it's the most amazing time so it's been a whirlwind yeah so what has gotten us to 10 years? What's gotten us to the mark? Yeah. So we've actually been together longer than 10 years, if you yeah. count the dating yeah. component. But as far as like that 10 years of marriage, our top 10 tips, Yeah. not as experts, but as lifelong learners, I guess. Right. Number one, I think I had mentioned to you earlier today is just how we've grown together rather right. than like, you know, living that deferred life plan where it's like you work really hard and then you retire, then you have fun or this like for marriage, this mentality that like, I'm going to figure me out before right. I find the perfect person yep. or I'm going to get my career established before having kids and all these things sound nice in theory, but like yeah. we've seen a lot of people who have figured themselves out to the point where they're not willing to budge on right their routines and rituals and habits and ways of living and enough to let somebody else in right. for the long haul. So I feel like instead yeah. we immediately connected and had so much fun. We were each other's best friends. We, we, didn't, we didn't fully know who we were or where we were going, but we no. did that together. I think number two, within love, there are so many different definitions of love. Yeah. But most of us, at least when we're young, we think about the puppy dog love when right. we're in the honeymoon phase and yeah. you just feel these butterflies and warm fuzzies all the time. Right. But we've learned that love is a choice. Yeah. And my, um, my aunt's parents yep. are from India. They're Indian. Mm -hmm. And I think they're the perfect example that we always refer to because yep. they had an arranged marriage and they did not know each other and they got married like very shortly after meeting each other right and they are still together to this day and they're very cohesive and they're very just they're the sweetest people yeah. and that and it's just so inspiring and now like i just said in the last 
little tip here. It's like so hard to be content because you get on social media and there's always someone more successful or better looking or whatever. And it's like, man, that would be very difficult. But if you can, yeah, just be committed. Choose love even when you don't feel love. Right. I heard this this morning and I think, I think you did too. You learn to defer what you prefer for the sake of the other. That's been yeah. very empowering because I was very afraid that love would run out as mm -hmm. someone who has divorced parents. I'm like, what if that love stops or runs out? And I'm like, well, you decide mm -hmm. to love. Having open communication is like so paramount. And I think you've really drilled that into me since day one being that always keep the communication lines open even if it hurts it's better for it to hurt a little bit to talk about it right now rather yeah. than it to be so painful down the road communication in regards to like the five love languages that was a good book to read definitely mm -hmm. because it, sure. it it's all about this is how i feel this is what i need and mm -hmm. if you can identify that in yourself and then openly communicate that with your spouse or with your partner like that's a good start mm -hmm. because that's what we need I'll yeah. be like, hey, Erin, like, I'm frustrated because I'm not getting this certain thing from you. But if I've never told her, mm -hmm. how is she supposed to know? And because we all try to provide the type of love that we need ourselves, but sometimes that isn't what the other it's needs. It's different, yeah. So we have to give something that we're not used to sometimes. Do the work, identify what it is you need for yourself, and then communicate that openly, and things will hopefully go in the right direction. I think the next tip is priorities so this is something especially if you come from a christian background you're usually taught to put god and jesus first yeah marriage comes second and your children your offspring come third and i think since becoming parents you really recognize how quickly backwards. it gets reversed yeah and yeah it's totally opposite because you just want what's best for your kids and marriage and your spouse kind of gets squashed in the middle right and it kind of just gets drowned out recently we've done a really good job of prioritizing each other and we still need to work on the the faith aspect and, and setting a good example for the kids but mm -hmm. the family that prays together stays together right i think our our kids really are cognizant of every time we pray before a meal yeah i think even more impactful than like going to church has been our trips to Costa Rica like Max will say things like wow dad did you know God made all these grains of sand and it's a good mashup of all those things to be like with your spouse in nature with the kids witnessing God highly recommend that and I think the reason we put God first is because other otherwise our spouse can become our God our kids can become our God right and what that means is that you're putting all of your eggs in their basket to meet right. all of your needs when yep. really we only need to be leaning on God and that takes some of the heat off and the pressure off of our yep. family members especially our spouses to right. be able to always be that perfect person to For meet our us. needs yeah we like because they're going we're going to fail each other even if we're committed I can't rely on her for everything. I can rely on God and I can do the work on myself and that's been huge. Mm -hmm. Next is compromise. Yeah. So we've always been super lucky and blessed to have so much in common and usually align on like yeah. things when it comes to taste and preference. We do have a lot in common. It's made it very easy, but definitely even down to like what's for dinner or what's for breakfast you you have to learn to compromise right it's like if you don't learn to bend you will break like the palm trees here like, during the hurricane exactly <laughs> mm -hmm. you can apply that to everything in life certainly with the kids too because you can be as hard as you want and set rules and set boundaries and they will try even harder to break those and it's like you've got to learn to, to compromise with the, with the kids too, or with your own expectations for the kids. Mm -hmm. um, so compromise is definitely a big one. So a couple more, I think the big one for us has been to try new things mm -hmm. together, which we could be better at, honestly. Mm -hmm. Travels and all Couples the things. Couples yoga was a big one that sticks out in my mind. Right, that we've literally only ever done one time it's in the 10 years we've been married, but we need to do it again. And we want to go scuba diving together, which we right. had planned for, but then I found out I was pregnant with Max when we were in, right. we went to Hawaii and I couldn't do it. But like, yeah. I feel like 
something that makes this healthy for a relationship, doing new things, is that there's an element of uncertainty and fear. Yeah. And so you're doing something that you're kind of uncertain and scared of together. Yeah. And it bonds you closer because you kind of lean on each other and you do it together. Another one is alone time. So yeah. it's like once you become a unit, especially as a family, especially since we work at home. Right. I mean, we've been together 365 days out of the year yeah. for the past year, yeah. but we do have to find those times for like Dusty to go for a quick ride by himself right. or me to even like run to the store or be here alone while you take them for a nap drive, just even right. for those short periods of time. So yeah, I think alone time, like together alone time is obviously important, but certainly like separate alone time mm -hmm. is really good to recharge especially like you said when we work together at home we need that break once in a while the other one is own up i think you <laughs> got better at this and, and that encouraged me to get better at it as well it's right. just like you're right i was wrong yeah like i'm sorry it just like disarms the whole disagreement right like, it dissipates almost in an instant yeah um sometimes even if we aren't sure who is right and who is wrong yeah. I feel like one of us ends up just saying, okay, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, like, you have to. You, because, I get it, you know. Like, we're both type A, like, hard-headed type of people. And Fight fire with fire. It just gets bigger. It can. Yep, exactly. And so, <laughs> recently, I think I, I can't remember if it was like a core, online course or a retreat, but I did hear something about it. It was like, just be the one to own up and say, I'm sorry first. And it's like, we're both getting good at that. And that'll that'll dissipate every argument it'll get you back on track because like you always make up it's like let's just let's just kill this now and mm -hmm. get back on the right track and yeah. the, along with that it kind of comes like agree to disagree yeah because it's like a lot of times with that i think yeah. you're having a good day i'm having a good day right we're both happy go lucky but for some reason we come together and we butt heads right and we're both like you know what I'm not really willing to let this disrupt my good day. Let's right. just agree to disagree. Totally. And it can be frustrating again when we've grown together. Like we've been together for probably 13 or 14 years realistically since we were truly together and we were so young. I'm like, she should just like everything that I like. She should just know already what I like or what I need. And she should just want to do the same things, but it's not always the case. So. It's so important to, again, agree to disagree and take some alone time <laughs> if you need to. And that's been, that's been helpful too, especially with the kids too lately. And last and finally, if you guys <laughs> watched the interview we did with our moms, which was so much fun. Yeah, We've gotten was. a lot of good comments on that one. Yeah. Your mom mentioned something that most people don't know about us yeah. is that we are funny and yeah. <laughs> goofy and we're always all laughing when we're all together. Totally. And we have a lot of fun. Yeah. So have fun. Like mm -hmm. bottom line, have fun. Comedies. Like yep. watch something lighthearted that makes you laugh. Just the kids have really brought that out in us a lot too. Like just dancing and being goofy like nobody's totally. watching. I just feel like getting to be a child with them has right. helped us all to be a little bit lighter. I've taken this this piece of wisdom from listening to these entrepreneurs talk and they're like, put yourself in this position. Let's say you have $10 million or $100 million, like you're set for life. You don't have to worry about, you know, what to buy or where to work or any of these things. What then, what becomes your main goal in life? And it's true. It's like, I just want to be happy, enjoy life, have fun. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, we don't have to be mega rich millionaires to just have fun no matter what, mm -hmm. all day, every day. Let's just have fun. Let's do the things we enjoy, whether they're together or separately. Let's just have fun and let's mm -hmm. make sure the kids especially are having fun too. Yeah. And especially since we work together, not every conversation yeah. in every every quiet time needs to be about work. Right. And not everything needs to be serious either. Right. Like, I think sometimes too, like we can take every situation too seriously with the kids, like Max wetting the bed and then we get yeah. frustrated and, but it's like, Later that night when something frustrating happens, we spin it into this like hilarious yarn yeah. that we like 
talk to your mom on FaceTime about. So funny. And she's belly laughing and rolling on the floor and, yeah. and just like tears are down our face because we're just like, yeah. that was actually really funny in hindsight. So like recognizing yeah. that right away can kind of help you to not turn go overboard. Turn your disasters into comedy. Like like seriously. That's what stand-up comedians do, which is right. how they and become movies. successful. These movies are like, okay, wow, this is a complete disaster. It's hilarious. I'm thinking of like Ben Stiller movies. Mm -hmm. Everything that could possibly go wrong does go wrong, but it's hilarious. And that's how we're like living our life. Yes, especially with kids, but certainly with our retreats and moving away, it's it's constantly like a hilarious disaster and it's so much fun. So now our top 10 goals for the next 10 years. At the forefront of my mind is possibly growing our family, even yeah. if that means more pets. If kids aren't in our plan, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but just more life. <laughs> totally, kids for sure, we're open to that. Uh, as far as we know, there are no, no kids on the way, but we're definitely open and excited about that. More animals. Um, more plants, a bigger garden For would be sure. awesome. I'm having so much fun planting flowers and landscaping and Aaron's planted a garden. Possibly like with that building a house, wouldn't maybe be the forever home, but maybe it would. But building a house is definitely something that gets us excited. Becoming successful, accomplished authors of maybe not right. just one book, but multiple. We are in the Ten process. Ten years, I mean, that's totally. a long time. That could be a lot of books. We're currently in the process of publishing our first book. It should be out in like a year. There's so many things that we would like to do and and then be able to like teach other people how to yeah. do it, which would be really fun too. So maybe like courses, like building courses that help you guys either get healthy or learn to do what we do. That would be a goal too. Mm -hmm. Travel, like continuing to see more places in the world yep. and really investing more in hobbies is another one. Right. Like getting back um, into regular playing tennis. Yep. Finishing <laughs> learning Spanish I'm in the middle of right now. Oh, sweetie. Community is something we're in search of. We want to invest more in our faith. So like maybe those could work together, like more of a church community, more of a like, like-minded community of like living space we want to have people living around us that eat the same way as us and and can grow a massive garden together that would be a super fun kind of mashup of all the things tennis for aaron for me probably like completing my first triathlon because I've been running and riding lately. Yeah, so thank you guys for coming along with us. Thank you for joining us for the future as well and hopefully these tips helped you out. Yeah, so fun. We're loving what we're doing. Just feel so fortunate. Stay tuned for next week. We'll have more recipes and fun coming at you guys. Bye guys. <laughs> there are three things we all do every day and we could all be doing them better. Eat, move and rest. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, Olivia, and Bo, and we're the Stanzix. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.